Imagine that millions of people have read an ancient book for thousands of years, believing it to contain all the answers about God, humanity, and the universe. But as you start flipping through its pages, something feels off. In one story, God is forgiving, loving, and merciful. In another, he's fierce, ordering destruction, punishing entire cities, and commanding wars. How could these two totally different versions of God fit together? For centuries, some groups held the belief that these two aspects of God were not the same entity. Ancient thinkers, like the Gnostics, believed that the God who punished and destroyed wasn't the true God at all, but a lesser, flawed being trying to control humanity. They perceived the true as a hidden, unknowable creator, full of light and truth, surpassing the depictions in these wrathful stories. They believed that the current form of the Bible concealed this truth from us, leading us to worship a controlling God rather than a liberating one. The Council of Nicaea was a powerful gathering that took place over 1,600 years ago. Led by the Roman Emperor Constantine, his goal wasn't about understanding God, but unifying an empire. So, church leaders gathered to decide which parts of the Christian story would stay and which would go. They picked the stories that would make people follow a certain way and left out texts that might make people ask too many questions or, worse, start thinking for themselves. We buried or even destroyed texts like the Gospel of Thomas, which depicts a Jesus focused on inner wisdom, not just obeying rules. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene, which suggested Mary was a close disciple with her own insights, also did not survive. It seems as though these texts were deemed too dangerous or too liberating for people to read. For years, these lost texts remained hidden, sealed in jars or buried in caves, until archaeologists found them centuries later. They describe a God that's not about control, but about personal discovery and spiritual freedom. They suggest that Jesus came not to die for sins, but to help humanity break free from the darkness of a false, controlling God. Imagine the shock of early Christians who believed these things. It's no wonder they were called heretics and silenced. In this Bible, we see these two distinct aspects of God, one as the loving, merciful guide, and the other as a powerful, punishing force. On one side, we see the God Jesus spoke about in the New Testament, a being of love, compassion, and forgiveness. But on the other side, the Old Testament presents Yahweh, a God who demands loyalty, instills fear, and isn't afraid to destroy entire cities or wipe out civilizations. It's as if we're witnessing two separate characters sharing one title. This idea isn't just a modern theory, it's one that ancient groups, like the Gnostics, believed and even built their faith around. The Gnostics, a spiritual movement that emerged alongside early Christianity, saw Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, as a flawed being a demiurge who created the material world but kept humanity trapped within it. To them, Yahweh wasn't the ultimate creator, but a lesser power who wanted to keep people ignorant and fearful. In the Gnostic view, true divinity wasn't about wrath and control, but was something far greater, something beyond the pages of the Old Testament. They held the belief that the true God awaited discovery as a hidden, unknowable force of light and wisdom. We all face moments when life seems like it will crush us and finding answers seems impossible. In those moments, having more understanding, clarity and guidance can make a difference. And that is exactly what banned Skrets. The lost knowledge of Jesus offers a path to clarity and peace through the hidden teachings of Jesus. If you are seeking clarity and hope, this ebook could be a lifesaver for you. The best part is, you can download it as a gift from the first comment posted. This ebook could be exactly what you need today. One of the Gnostic texts, 
the secret book of John, offers a glimpse into this alternative view. This text portrays Yahweh as a lower being who, out of ignorance, claimed himself as the sole God, unaware that he was just one part of a much larger divine reality. According to this belief, humanity's true mission was to wake up and recognize this hidden truth, freeing themselves from his control and seeking a higher understanding. This radical idea painted Yahweh not as a god of love, but as a figure who kept humanity trapped in a world of materialism, fear and suffering. Historically, these beliefs didn't sit well with the leaders of early Christianity. By the 4th century, as the church grew more powerful, leaders became increasingly focused on unity and authority. In 325 AD, Roman Emperor Constantine saw the potential of a united church to stabilize his empire. So he convened a gathering of church leaders known as the Council of Nicaea. This council wasn't just about religious faith, it was a political strategy. Constantine wanted a standardized version of Christianity that would unify his people, which meant eliminating conflicting beliefs and texts that could threaten the church's authority. At the Council of Nicaea, leaders made several decisions that would shape Christianity for the next 2,000 years. They defined the Nicene Creed, a statement of faith that established Jesus as both fully divine and fully human, setting the foundation for orthodox Christian beliefs. This moment also solidified the idea of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit as one. Which books to include in the Bible was even more important. Texts that didn't align with the Council's version of Christianity were excluded, labelled as heretical and banned. They excluded the texts of the Gnostics. People viewed their beliefs that Yahweh wasn't the ultimate God and that hidden wisdom lay beyond traditional teachings as dangerous ideas. Gnostic texts like the Gospel of Thomas, which encouraged self-discovery and spiritual awakening, didn't fit with the Church's goal of creating followers who would adhere to a standardized belief system. Church leaders labeled these texts as heretical leading to the hunting down, destruction or hiding of the Gnostics and their writings over the following centuries. The Church gradually erased alternative ideas from mainstream belief, leaving only the narratives it wanted people to follow. For the Gnostics and other heretical groups, this was devastating. They believed they possessed a fragment of the authentic narrative, yet the powerful prevented its dissemination. Centuries of orthodox teachings defined what it meant to be a Christian, burying these forbidden texts over time. In the early centuries after Jesus' death, different Christian groups believed in different versions of his teachings. Some of these groups, like the Gnostics, followed ideas that emphasized personal discovery, inner wisdom and spiritual freedom. However, the Church's emerging structure centered on unity authority and a strict set of beliefs did not align with these ideas. So, over time, church leaders worked to silence and erase these alternative views. One of the key decisions made at the Council of Nicaea was to exclude certain books from the Bible, texts that offered ideas that didn't align with the church's teachings. These texts suggested that Jesus came not just to save humanity, but to awaken people to the divine spark within themselves. They emphasized personal enlightenment and suggested that followers didn't need an institution to connect with God, something that could potentially undermine the Church's authority. These lost books challenged the traditional view by promoting ideas that people could find God within themselves, outside the Church's control. If people believed that they didn't need church leaders to guide their relationship with the divine, the entire structure of the church's power could crumble. The church labeled these texts as heretical to maintain control, viewing them as false teachings that could mislead people. One tragic example of this is the story of the Cathars, a peaceful Christian group in southern France 
who held beliefs similar to the Gnostics. The Cathars believed that the material world was flawed and that true connection with God came from the spiritual, not the physical. They rejected the Old Testament's portrayal of a wrathful God and this put them at odds with the Church. In 1209, Pope Innocent III declared a crusade against the Cathars, leading to the brutal Albigensian Crusade, which wiped out entire communities in the name of defending the Church's version of the truth. Throughout this time, the Church also targeted mystical and spiritual texts that didn't fit its strict doctrine. The Church either destroyed or concealed libraries of ancient manuscripts, leading to the loss of many texts to history. It wasn't until the 20th century that some of these ancient writings began to resurface. Egypt discovered a collection of Gnostic texts known as the Nag Hammadi Library in 1945, which included works such as the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Philip. These texts provide a glimpse into the diverse beliefs of early Christianity, buried and forgotten for centuries. The Church's efforts to control spiritual knowledge weren't just about preserving religious truth, they were also about maintaining power. By controlling the narrative, the Church leaders could ensure that they remained the gatekeepers of salvation, with the power to decide who was a true believer and who was a heretic. This structure of control kept people dependent on the Church for their understanding of God, limiting their access to other spiritual ideas. Gnostic teachings did not limit access to the divine to priests or religious leaders. They believed that each person carried a piece of the divine within them, something they called a divine spark. This spark was a hidden part of God that existed within each person, but most people didn't realize it was there. The Gnostics taught that humanity's true purpose was to awaken this divine spark, break free from the limitations of the material world, and connect with the higher realms of knowledge and spiritual truth. For them, Jesus was more than just a sin-forgiving figure. He served as a guide, awakening humanity to their true potential and the power within. This idea of a divine spark was dangerous for the Church because it suggested that people didn't need an institution to reach God. Imagine the Church's reaction to a teaching that said you could find enlightenment within yourself without relying on Church rituals or doctrines. This would mean that every individual had direct access to the Divine with no need for intermediaries. For the Church, this was a direct challenge to its authority and structure. For the Gnostics, awakening wasn't just a matter of believing in a certain doctrine. It was an internal journey, a process of gaining hidden knowledge, or gnosis, about the true nature of reality. Traditional teachings or dogma did not provide this knowledge. Personal experience and deep understanding did. In contrast, the early Church emphasized doctrines, rituals and obedience. The Church provided specific guidelines on what to believe, how to worship and whom to follow. By focusing on these external structures, the Church could maintain control and ensure that all believers followed the same path. The Gnostic idea of inner awakening, however, was deeply individualistic and posed a threat to this controlled system. If each person could find God within themselves, then religious leaders wouldn't be the gatekeepers of salvation and the Church's authority would weaken. If you're appreciating this deep dive, if you're feeling inspired by these ancient mysteries and hidden truths, consider showing your support with a super thanks. By clicking that button, you're contributing to the continuation of this journey, fostering the production of more thought-provoking content and igniting the quest for knowledge that defies conventional wisdom. The story of these hidden texts, silenced voices, and the lost teachings about spiritual awakening isn't just some ancient mystery. It serves as a reminder that powerful institutions often bury or reshape the truth to fit a particular narrative. 
the Church's effort to control beliefs about God, the soul, and our purpose in life was a way to keep people focused on obedience and tradition rather than questioning or self-discovery. But these hidden teachings that have resurfaced reveal something incredible, that spirituality might be less about following a set path and more about looking within, finding our own way, and discovering what we each believe about the divine. Each person carries within them a spark of the divine, a piece of the true God that can awaken through self-awareness and understanding, according to the Gnostic texts. These writings prompt us to contemplate that spiritual truth is not a gift, but a discovery you make for yourself. This idea can feel powerful, even liberating, because it tells us that the answers we're seeking aren't hidden in an ancient book or controlled by a religious authority. They're right here, within us. Think about what that could mean for our lives today. Each of us, possessing this divine spark within us, bears the responsibility to explore our own understanding, surpass conventional teachings, and establish a connection with the truth through our personal experiences. This isn't about rejecting traditional beliefs. It's about realizing that spirituality can be a deeply personal journey that no one can control or define for us. It's about waking up to the idea that the journey toward understanding the divine is open to anyone who's willing to look within and ask questions. The rediscovery of these ancient texts has given us a chance to see the bigger picture and to understand that spirituality doesn't have to be limited to one version of God or one story. It's akin to receiving pieces of a centuries-old puzzle we can now put those pieces together in a way that works for us. Thanks for watching. Join our community by subscribing to this channel. Until the next video.